This is Juliet and welcome to my screencast. Today I'm going to show you how to use Twitter not to follow celebrities but to stay ahead in your field. I'm going to make the assumption that you already know how to sign in to Twitter or get an account. So let me jump right in and I'll show you how to use this for professional purposes. So I am already signed in to my Twitter account and just to catch everybody up on some basics, this is my home page as you can see. I have been following 47 different people or organizations and 17 people follow me. And I'm going to start with trying to discover new people or organizations to follow. So I'm going to go up to this Discover tab and click on that. Wait a second for it to load. And they have some ideas based on who I am already following, but I want to start fresh. So I will click on Browse Categories. And I often recommend this for somebody who's not sure who to follow. Notice that there are many pop culture references, such as following music or sports or entertainment. And some of the most popular um, Twitter feeds are also funny feeds. I'm going to go down to some of my favorites here. And if you notice, under this technology tab, I automatically see something that I'm familiar with. And this is Wired Magazine, and they have a feed called Gadget Ab. Just to show you what this looks like, I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to click again. I can just click follow from here, but I want to see what this feed looks like. So I'm going to go further in, and man, they have a lot of people following them, almost 800,000. And you can see here are some of their feeds here. So I have not followed Wired Gadget Lab yet, so I'm going to click on follow close this box and then if I go to my home page and click on following you will see this gadget lab icon here showing that I am following their tweets. Another way to find popular organizations or unique microbloggers to follow is to use a hashtag search. You may have heard the word hashtag, follow this hashtag, in local news or even if you overhear students nowadays. The hashtag is just a way of labeling a specific microblog post, i.e. a small, short, Twitter post so it shows what content is covered. My example for this is to type in hash code small business. I'm going to click enter and they show top tweets and all of a sudden I see many different people and organizations who use Twitter to get their information out there. Notice when I talk about the hashtag, you will see each one of these tweets has that hashtag of small business in it. This is a way of writing a tweet and making sure that it can go out to the correct audience or people can find it. 
the, the nice thing about the hashtag is it doesn't have to be used but suppose you're at a conference often conferences will use a hashtag and you can actually follow many many people who are tweeting at that conference just by following their hashtag. Another way to look for topics of interest to you is to use the search box and type in an organization that is of interest. I'm going to type in Public Library Association. Notice I didn't use any hash codes. Now, these are all the top tweets that have used some sort of Public Library Association wording in their tweet. But if we look to the left hand side of the page, you can see some familiar icons so you can connect with the Public Library Association that you wanted to, to begin with. So I'm going to click on PLA and here we go. That is obviously the real Public Library Association and if I want to follow them I'll just click on follow and I'm now following them. So this is great. I just chose a few different organizations or people to follow, but what does that really mean? What kind of information am I getting? To show you that, I'm going to go back to my homepage, and you'll see I do follow a wide variety of different organizations and resources, and the information that they send out is called a tweet. It's a silly little word for a microblog. It's a very short piece of information that is sometimes connected to another URL. And you can see this bit.ly URL. That is a URL or a website that's been shortened, so it actually fits in the, tw in the small tweet better. And the nice thing is, if you notice, this tweet whoop, was received four minutes ago. This one, 22 minutes ago. And if we look at this one here, it was actually retweeted by the mayor's office. What happens is that if something popular comes up, people can actually tweet that tweet out, thereby calling it a retweet. So if I'm really excited about this first tweet, this Salesforce tweet, I'm reading it and I say, wow, top 10 benefits of using Twitter for service and support. I'm going to retweet that out and I can click on retweet and then all of a sudden I'm going to refresh the screen and I'm going to show you on my tweets it shows that I retweeted that tweet and that's how certain information gets really popular or disseminated quickly going back one thing that I'm often asked is hey do I have to tweet no, you don't. For a very long time, all I did was read Twitter. I would use it just to keep up with things that I was interested in. There wasn't any pressure for me to provide content. Just recently, I have been linking up and tweeting out my blog posts and other things that I find relevant but it isn't something you have to do. Many people use Twitter just to get the information that they need to stay on top of trends. 
I hope you enjoyed this very basic introduction of how to use Twitter for professional development. Have a good day.